Welcome back to the Blue Door Pub Thunderdome. Fiend of the Bull with Andy Carlson, Minnesota's 87th best daily podcast or schmodcast, whatever. Uh, show about everything and nothing coming right at your ass five days a week. Sitting shotgun is going to be Jason DeRussia of WCCO Moorings. It's going to be good. Uh, tell a friend, spread the word, iTunes, Stitcher, Aha Radio. Let's hit it. And coming back into the Blue Door Pub Studios is Jason DeRussia. Not, not DeRussia. Common <laughs> mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Well, every, when I was telling people, I was like, oh, yeah, I got uh, DeRussia on the show. I was like, oh, like, you got Jason DeRullo? <laughs> That's a big get. <laughs> I'm, people are very disappointed when they meet me and they think that they're yeah. meeting Jason DeRullo. <laughs> and they get this yeah. kind of doughy uh, mess instead of those rock hard abs. Was I like, did go see DeRullo in concert before. Oh, yeah? He's pretty good. Oh, he yeah. puts out a great show. Yeah. Um, Jason Derulo. Uh, <laughs> Derulo. <laughs> uh, DeRussia. Follow him on Twitter at DRussia, D E Russia J on Twitter and also on the Instagram and all the various social media. You, you're a big deal uh, on there. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know about that. Now it's all the Instagram influencers, mm-hmm. all the cool kids yeah. are, are blowing right by me. Yeah. But it, you, I'm you, an old person in social media. <laughs> I've been there for a long time. Well, it, it, so you're telling me that you don't mish, uh, mesh in with the, the kids on Instagram with the baller watch well, on, <laughs> on, the, on the rented yacht. <laughs> yes, I don't quite live that baller yeah. lifestyle, no. It is funny, though, when you see... The way social media has changed over mm-hmm. the over uh, over the years. In the media, yeah. I don't know that it's changed so much with us, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was one of the earlier people in the mainstream media responding to viewers and being uh, being involved in social media. And you would think now, I don't know, gosh, I started Twitter, what, uh, eight or nine years ago? And you'd mm-hmm. think, gosh, everybody, yeah. w- eh, it's still about the same. There are yeah. a couple people who are active. <laughs> uh, it's pretty much the... Yeah, the, the public figures who don't interact with their audience, I, I feel like that's sort of a fleeting thing because it, you know, audience attention just shifts everywhere else. And event, you know, you're hot right now, sure. Maybe you got 100,000 followers on right. Instagram or, or Twitter, but if you never reply to an at, it's like, no, I understand ignoring the yeah, DMs. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I think, I mean, to me, it's always been a great way. You know, as a journalist, you're always trying to make your work better, right? Mm-hmm. And the, the closer you can get to whatever story you're covering, the better. And social media lets you get close to uh, someone directly affected or with direct knowledge of just about every story out there. It's yeah. really remarkable. I mean, people, people uh, can provide context and document links and corrections to mm-hmm. mistakes and all this stuff that we never used to have before. To me, it's fantastic. Ooh, uh, Joss will say WCCO Mornings. Except everyone already knew that. I feel like you're, you're omnipresent this morning. You never know. I mean, yeah. uh, if you're not up, uh, mm-hmm. like say, you know, some, some of your audience, I yeah. suspect, doesn't wake up until... 10 in the morning. Oh, come on. Like, by that point, I've already been on TV for three and a half hours. No, you're basically done. <laughs> you're almost done have, uh, cracking a beer by 10. Correct, yeah. yeah. I mean, when you, when you wake up at 2.30 in the morning, yeah. I mean, what time is happy hour exactly? Mm-hmm. It's about now. Uh, so why don't you walk us through a typical day in the life of uh, uh, Jason to Russia? So the alarm goes off at 2.27. Yep. Uh, well, my Fitbit goes off at 2.26. Mm. The regular alarm goes off at 2.27. What time is bedtime? Bedtime for me is usually around 8.30 or 9. It mm-hmm. depends what I'm doing the night before. But I take a nap often. Mm. So now I'm, now I'm taking you reverse through my day. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but I'm up at 2.30. Uh, it takes about a half hour to get ready. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't have that much hair, so it doesn't take yep. that long for the morning prep. Leave my house at 3. Get to work about 3.30. I have uh, then one hour from when I walk in the door at CCO TV. Uh, till uh, the light goes on and mm-hmm. the show is on the air at 4.30. So in that hour, I pre-schedule all of our posts that go on the WCCO This Morning Facebook page. Mm-hmm. So to do that, I, of course, have to go through the whole show. So I'm looking through two and a half hours worth of uh, scripts and oh, teases so and you, copy. You're and the social that. media manager. I am, yes. Wow. We don't have a web person come mm-hmm. in until 5.30. Ah, So, gotcha. you know, and she's catching up on stuff from yeah. last night and whatever. So for us, it's uh, the joy of that is we have a, our Facebook page reflects the tone mm-hmm. of our show. 
which yeah. is cool. And, and that is really important getting in uh, you know, news stories. People wake up, roll, uh, roll over, look at their phone, check at the Facebook, and that's, that's the way yeah, to hit them right away. That's always my goal. Like, I want to be in people's feed right when mm-hmm. they wake up. And hopefully you have... You know, you have something that makes people say, like, oh, I better better turn on the TV. Yeah. Oh, it's the it's the new version of Wake Up With Jason. I'm sure it was very different, like, 20-plus 20, 20 years ago. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it was totally different. Everything's different. Yeah. Everything's different and everything's the same. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, it's all, all the, the ways we transmit information is different. The attention span of the audience is different. Yeah. But the morning TV, luckily for, for me anyway, is mm-hmm. still... Uh, you know, people are time shifting more than ever before. So the 10 o'clock news, the late news, those shows are uh, dealing with some struggles because yeah. think of how you watch primetime TV now. Like yeah. if you're if you're watching live TV, you know, you're not Netflixing and mm-hmm. you're, you're probably DVRing it and time shifting it. So yeah. maybe you start watching how I, uh, uh, well, you, how I Met Your Mother. You're watching on Netflix, but maybe mm-hmm. you're watching The Big Bang Theory. Instead of watching it at 7, you start watching at 8.42. Mm-hmm. And so when 10 o'clock comes around to watch the news, you might be in the middle of a show. Yep. And so most people don't DVR the 10 o'clock news. I, I, so. I liked how you plugged CBS shows. I'm always that on message. That, that's always hashtag I, you on gotta think. you yeah. got to think real <laughs> fast. Don't say... Yeah. Uh, don't say, you know, mm-hmm. I can't even think of a show on another network because yeah. that's all I watch. Yeah. CBS. And yeah, I've had a that's bunch all of, I get. I've had a bunch of news people, you know, like hardcore news and sports people through. And I, I do commiserate, especially with the, like the late in the day stories people, because we're in such a 24 hour news cycle that soon as the, the nine or 10 o'clock news comes on, I was like, oh yeah, I've been over this like 17 times by seven o'clock. <laughs> right. But right. the morning you have a little bit of advantage because people are just starting their day. It's like the clock resets. And you're you're good to go. I think so, yeah. I mean, you know, the truth is, ever since Donald Trump has been elected president, there, oh, yeah. are, there are developments <laughs> on things that are happening overnight all the time. So mm-hmm. stuff that happens while you're asleep. People in the morning tend to watch live TV, so that yeah. works out well for us. And for advertisers, you know, in a time shift environment when everyone's fast-forwarding mm-hmm. through commercials... People still watch the commercials on a morning show. Yeah. Now, in the morning, you're doing stuff, right? Like maybe you're getting the kids ready or maybe you're whatever you're doing in the morning. Mm-hmm. You're not necessarily sitting there giving 100% attention. Yeah. So that's a little different. But you're not fast-forwarding through the commercials. So yeah. I don't know. We have, we have good things uh, going for us as far as the immediate future goes mm-hmm. in, in as far as anyone can see with a crystal ball, who knows, yeah. right? With, with commercials, I'm just waiting for the day where it's no longer 30 seconds. It's literally two seconds, and it's just uh, like an attractive person yelling, Toyota. Right. <laughs> Next. <laughs> We've struggled with, like, how do we do, you know, local news for years has done uh, the, the classic Tonight at 10 or mm-hmm. Tonight at 5. Well, how do you do those promos for your show yep. if people are watching Wednesday night's programming on Friday? Mm-hmm. So how yeah. do you, wh- what do you do? Yeah. So, you know, it's, it, to me, it's fun to be, if you're in commu- a communication business, like in a time of rapid change, like it's, mm-hmm. it's fantastic. If you're an innovator and you like to be flexible and try new things, mm-hmm. it's, it's an awesome time to be in journalism. All right. So that's looking forward. Let's take a look back. Uh, Where did you come from? Where did you go? How did you get your start? So I grew up in suburban Chicago. Uh, I was, from a young age, Always interested in broadcasting. Mm-hmm. So I will say, like, there, you have different categories of people who end up working in news. Some are just hardcore journalists. Some are broadcasters. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of, you know, I grew up, my, my broadcast icons were David Letterman and Peter Jennings. Oh, so, wow. you know, you're really yeah. running the gamut there. <laughs> but both were phenomenal broadcasters. Mm-hmm. And so I consider myself cut from... I'm a journalist, but I'm cut from a broadcaster mode. Mm-hmm. Some people are more broadcasters who, who, or, who are journalists who learn TV. And then some people just want to be on TV, yep. right? Like that's always been the case. Now, do you have a good balance of you know, being on air but also being out in the field and chasing down your own stories? You know, I get to do a little of that. Uh, last week there was a tornado in Wisconsin, and mm-hmm. I got them to let me go out and yep. cover it. Because we're on the air so much, it's hard for me to get out very often. Although every week I do a food story mm-hmm. for my De Russia Eats yep. segment. So every every week I am out at least still talking to people doing stories, which I like. And writing. Yeah. I like doing the writing. All of that. Ooh, yeah, let's dive into De Russia Eats. Uh, what's been your favorite place you've covered in recent memory? 
Ooh. Well, I will say, like, this year, so I, I have kind of two different parts of my Derusha Eats persona. Part is mm-hmm. that on the TV side, I get to tell these great stories. Today we did an awesome story with Tim Fisher, who's the executive chef at the Lowe's Hotel. Mm-hmm. And Tim uh, is a, a forager. So we went out in the woods yep. and went morel hunting. Yeah. And then he took what... Oh, we, good. He's like an actual forager, not like an actual urban forager. forager. No, urban no, no. Forager, like, oh, Real forager. On, yeah. Not like looking through his yeah. backyard or whatever. Uh, but then we went back to the hotel and cooked mm-hmm. it. It was a really cool yeah. story. That turned out really neat. Um, so you, you get to do stories like that. Then on the Minnesota Monthly side, I'm also the food critic for the magazine. Mm-hmm. So uh, this year has been a phenomenal year for new restaurants opening up. You know, you had uh, Belcor in YZ, oh, yeah. which is just a phenomenal restaurant mm-hmm. uh, opened by Gavin Kaysen, who has Spoon and Stable. I would say Belcor is actually a better restaurant than Spoon and Stable. Oh. Certainly at this stage in the game, it's, it's fantastic. Did, did Gavin win Top Chef or was he, because uh, I forget which season he was on. So he's been a judge. He's mm-hmm. been, I, he didn't win Top Chef, but, uh, but he's had an amazing, amazing career as a chef in New York City. And yeah. Then, coming home so uh belcor is phenomenal and then last night i went to grand cafe mm-hmm. which was just relaunched by uh two chefs who bought it uh they met working at sea change mm-hmm. and man people are gonna love that place too it's just fantastic oh speaking of fantastic we got some delicious delivered at here at the blue door pub uh get on down here they uh their their wing uh rotating wing flavor uh just wing it is tennessee hot wings just think of i had those last night super spicy super delicious awesome. and also the bangkok blue sea here's what they do they soak some mozzarella in coconut and then pickled veggies on top curry it's amazing. Hit it up. Uh, the Blue Door Pub, uh, all three locations, St. Paul, University on Como, and Longfellow, the OG. Uh, we're going to take an early break, but we'll be right back real quick with uh, Jason Drusha of WCC. Oh. oh. Yeah. God, I love doing that. <laughs> so 2016 sucked. For the Vikings, and also for a number of other reasons I heard. But it's okay. 2017 is upon us. Vikings fans, let's get going. All offseason, Purple for the Win coming right at you through free agency, the draft, and OTAs and training camp. Here we go. Get the show on 1500 ESPN Podcast One and the Podcast One app. And come back into the Blue Door Pub Studios, and uh, Jason has a very lovely house in the Western Burbs. But if he wants to move down south of the river and join me, baby, you, you know what to do. Josh Pelto, Remax Preferred, will help him out. I know him. You love him. Jason loves him too, no doubt. Yeah, there we go. Uh, first time home buyer or moving on up. Yeah, just like Jason and I are going to be doing. Uh, Twin Cities Real Estate Market is his. Get you the best price whether you're buying. Or selling, uh, selling. Give him a call seven six three two one three four six one seven. Josh Pelzo, Remax preferred. Uh, all right, so we're chugging along because you have a hard out because you're going to see your trainer after yeah. consuming this delicious Blue Door. It's it's a struggle to be a food writer and a TV anchor. Yeah. They don't necessarily go together. Ooh, uh, how would you like to be a guy who's sponsored by a delicious pub like Blue Door <laughs> and comes here? You look at, good. How do you uh, how do you keep in shape? What do you do? Uh, well, the wife politely suggested that I join uh, Lifetime Fitness. They're not a sponsor yet, but they should be. Uh, and I go there five, day, five days a week. Yeah. yeah. You have yeah. to, right? To now, your trainer, uh, why don't you give her a plug? So it's Allie Holman. She mm-hmm. does workout segments on our mid-morning show every yeah. Monday. And Allie, so yesterday was my first day. Yeah. And today she said she was going to measure, oh. m- measure my yeah. gut. So, now, uh, camera crew gonna be there? No, I feel like this no, is no, good no, content. no, 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 no. Hopefully, there will be a nice after picture yeah. after a couple of months. But yeah. Uh, yeah, it's good. It's a hard workout. It's hardcore, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm a little concerned about eating half of half of this sandwich mm-hmm. that I'm gonna be feeling it when she's working <laughs> the living daylights out of me. Oh no, it, it's good. That there's some restraint that you only ate half. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, I, I hope she's listening. I Jason, only uh, Jason's gonna get the other half during the, <laughs> this segment. But uh, dipping back into uh, the start, Chicago land boy, uh, right. Chicago sports down the board, 
right. no doubt. Right. I was a Cubs guy, mm-hmm. but my family didn't have a lot of money, so uh, and the White Sox didn't have a lot of fans yeah. in Comiskey Park oh, at the time. Yeah. So they used to give us free tickets if you made the A or B honor roll, kind of a low standard there. Yep. And you could get free tickets to games. So I ended up going to more uh, Sox games than Cubs games. Oh, that's really But cool. I was a Cubs guy. I mean, yeah. you know, you, you you can uh, recite the, the lineup of the Ryan Sandberg, mm. Sean Dunstan, Ron Say, oh, yeah. years, uh, Jody e- Davis. Even I remember those because of WGN. WGN, yeah. right. That's where yeah, baseball, uh, football has obviously taken over uh, my brain right, power as the right. sport. But I grew up with baseball, huge Twins fan. And your them. choices were pretty yeah. much the Cubs or the uh, Atlanta yeah. Hawks, right, on TB, yeah. or uh, the Atlanta Braves, yeah. sorry, on TB, TNT, yeah. TBS? The TBS, yeah, TBS, the Superstation. Yeah, the Superstation. Yeah, so yeah. it, it, it's weird. Those are my teams growing up, the, right? the, the, the Twins, the Cubs, and the Braves, just for just because Ted Turner bought a really right? big satellite dish. Yeah, it's still, I mean, there's still some legacy to that mm-hmm. overseas and all around the world. You know, there are these weird Atlanta yeah. fans, but because of TBS. Yeah, and... The whole branding thing, I think, is really important. Uh, and the Vikings have done that to an extent uh, world, uh, worldwide, you see, because of the whole Vikings thing and also the Vikings TV show phenomena. Yes. They're really trying to make a push into Europe, which I think is cool. It's smart. Well, you look at the Timberwolves. The Timberwolves mm-hmm. have, I believe, the, the one of the largest fan bases in Asia. And you're yep. like, well, that's weird, but that's just mm-hmm. one of their owners, I think. They have a new owner. Who is from uh, China? Yeah, China, a new right? minority owner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, so it's just very interesting. I mean, I was in Spain this summer, and there were Ricky Rubio jerseys all yeah. over the place. Oh, of uh, course, right? Uh, Jason, do you ever play poker? Yes. Ooh, need to get. No. All right. Uh, so <laughs> my favorite thing is uh, when they show televised poker, and especially when it's high roller stuff, it will be you know, a couple of American entrepreneurs. They'll say what company they work for, yeah. and then it will just be the Asian guys from Macau, right. <laughs> and they'll just be Asian businessmen. That's right. As their titles. Like, that's what I aspire to be. Asian businessman. Yeah, just listen as Asian business. It's not bad. I would love I to go. be that also. Yeah. I mean, there are a few things uh, not in my favor mm. for that. But. Uh, what interest do you have uh, outside of news? Uh, what, what, what's Jason's side hustles? Right. Well, I mean, I have uh, mostly all I do is work and mm-hmm. dad. Yep. This is These are my two main things. I love uh, last year I took up bike riding. I spent a lot of time riding mm-hmm. the bike. That's, you know, it's so hard to get away from devices and everything and yep. Twitter and Instagram and whatever. So uh, I do enjoy like mm-hmm. that time riding through the woods. And, yep. and now, do you, do you have the phone in like the fanny pack? Or well, the, now the, I have the a, there's a little holster that yeah. uh, is uh, right on top of the oh, handlebars. No. Oh, no. Yes, but I use that just for the map mm-hmm. because sometimes, you know, I will say we have great bike trails around here, especially yeah. in the north metro, uh, in the northwest metro. But when you try coming into Minneapolis, I, try, I thought, you know, it'd be nice to take a ride along the Mississippi River. Mm-hmm. And next thing I knew it, I... I uh, well, look, put it this way, if I need to kill a guy and hide a body, <laughs> I've got a spot in yeah. northeast Minneapolis that I could go to. Yeah, like, uh, where am I? I'm what sure is actually happening? many people do in northeast Minneapolis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your favorite route? Uh, I, I love the bike path to the Coon Rapids Dam, mm-hmm. so that is a nice one. I, I went uh, Last year I went from St. Paul to Stillwater. Mm-hmm. Uh, And I forget the name of the Gateway Trail, I think, is the name of that bike path. That is a beautiful ride. Mm. And that was really fun. I like that a lot. Now, do you have the full get up? Are are you like all Lance Armstrong? Absolutely not. No. And Kim Johnson, my co anchor in the morning, does triathlons. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So Kim has been trying to get, she's like, you need to get the padded shorts Mm. with the butt pad on it. (laughs) I'm like, I am not getting butt pad shorts. Like, that is not happening. Oh. It's too far. Wait, oh, Can't oh, do I, it. I, I thought this was going to pay off with uh, and then I did after my and first like, three no. rides. <laughs> no, my butt just hurts. That's yeah. fine. Like yeah. that's fine. I would rather have that than mm-hmm. have. I, I just can't. I can't bring myself to wear padded spandex. Yeah. I, uh, being a uh, fellow suburban, I have a I have a longstanding beef with uh, the the weekend warrior guys who get up in the the whole FedEx the gear. Whole, yes. and then, oh, also have like the button down, <laughs> the, showing up, showing off the chest. There's hair. always a lot yeah. of chest. Does yeah. that help with the aerodynamics? I don't understand. Th- well, they see like the the dirty Frenchman in the Tour de France <laughs> doing like, oh, uh-huh, here we go. I do not approve. And uh, the they always ride on the highway, like. Uh, yeah, in beautiful downtown Minneapolis, where we are now, they sure. have uh, 
nice wide bike Correct. lanes, which is cool. But in the suburbs, not so much because they have very beautiful, well-maintained, taxpayer-paid-for trails that yeah. are six feet wide. We have great trails. They don't ride on them. My trails, uh, uh, right from my subdivision, I can yeah. get to uh, all sorts of different Three Rivers Park District yeah. areas yeah. and get to the Coombe Rapids Dam. Yeah. It's pretty good. Except they don't ride on them. I yeah. ride on it. Yeah, I'm not, go. you know, yeah. safety first for yeah. me. The road doesn't feel the same as the trail, man. It's, <laughs> they're both asphalt. Get out of here. Uh, yeah. Well, sometimes you're trying to get somewhere a little more directly. Maybe yeah. you don't want to take the trail. You yeah. know. Uh, I'm... Famous for my segues, but I have none here. Uh, okay. you, were, you were the first on the scene of the 35 yeah. collapse. Yeah, it's a day that, uh, well, I'll never forget it. Yeah. And uh, there are times that, uh, you know, there are a lot of times that I just go back there. I mentally go back there and mm-hmm. think about the people that I met that day and the people I talked to that day. And wonder kind of where they are and how they're doing mm. and what they're up to. But, you know, it was, a, it was a Wednesday. It was a hot, hot summer day. I was sitting in the newsroom waiting to do a story about the Nicollet Mall Farmer's Market, mm. which uh, they were canceling because it was too hot and too dry. So they were canceling the Farmer's Market. So I was waiting for the farmers to come in from the field. So I was just sitting in the newsroom when we heard a scanner call about a bridge collapse. Mm-hmm. When you hear bridge collapse on a hot day, you just think, uh, you know, like a like a, a sinkhole. Yeah. Or, or like the Stillwater bike trail yeah. bridge. In the 35W bridge, honestly, before mm-hmm. the collapse, you would have a hard time finding anybody who knew what that bridge was. Yeah. It wasn't architecturally significant. It didn't stand out. Mm-hmm. Frankly, you didn't even know you were riding over it when you went over it. It yeah. just felt like the highway. Uh, even the dispatchers, when we got the 911 tapes, were confused as to which bridge uh, the callers were talking about. So we show up, and you see people coming up, you know, carrying other people up the hill over by the Red Cross there, uh, by the Mississippi River. And, uh, you know, it was summer, so there were leaves on all the trees. So we didn't really, we weren't able to see exactly what was going on. Mm-hmm. But as I pulled up, we saw, we saw the semi-truck on fire, and the school bus with the rear door open, which immediately took me back to being a kid doing those fire drills where you had to uh, practice getting out of the bus, right? So seeing that gave me some hope that that showed at least Mm -hmm. there was time for those kids to get off that bus. I wish at the time it it never crossed my mind that that uh, semi-truck that was on fire that the driver of the truck would have still been in the cab, mm. uh, as it turned out he was. And I, it just, you know, you're trying to process all these things, and that possibility didn't even cross my mind. But it was, it was, an, it, it was the worst thing that has ever happened in the state of Minnesota. Hopefully mm. it'll be the worst thing that ever happens. Um, but this was pre-Twitter, pre-Facebook, yep. really. I had a MySpace page. So after, you know, we got there, I was first on the air at 621, the bridge went down at 6.15, uh, so pretty quickly after. Mm. We were very, very close. And uh, I went home and was getting uh, MySpace messages from people oh, geez. thanking me. Yeah. And you look and you're like, thanking me? Like, I mean, I, I did nothing. Mm. But the fact that I had been in this town for a little while, I wasn't hysterical. I wasn't trying to make a name for myself. Yep. Uh, the fact that I had a couple years' experience in this city, plus plenty of years before here, I think helped me out a lot. Now, initially... But I was emotionally a wreck. Yeah. I kept going back to the site. Mm. So my wife, at the time, was pregnant, and she's like, you made me come down to the bridge to see it mm. with our, like, then two-year-old as yeah. she came down. But I just, I, every day after the bridge collapsed on my way to work, went and just stopped and just sat there. Yeah. And today I look, today I think, like, I should have gone to therapy, right? Yeah. No, like, today I think we have much more of an understanding mm-hmm. about how these traumatic effect, events can affect yep. first responders and even journalists. And it really profoundly affected me. Yeah, it really I mean, did. you're one of the first ones there. You're unsure what happened. You see all this carnage. Yeah. And it looks like a war. Like, you don't know. We thought, what, uh, we thought 100 people would be dead. Yeah. And uh, it's plus, amazing you, didn't know it, it you didn't know that it wasn't a terrorist attack at the time. We didn't know anything, really. Yeah. I mean, uh, 
until we got the helicopter images, we mm-hmm. really didn't have the full scope as to what was happening. Yep. We just know that the law enforcement kept moving us back and back and back. And then by 830, you looked out and it looked like, you know, a, a virtual hospital had uh, been created in those parking lots and streets mm-hmm. all along the river. It was a remarkable evening. I mean, just watching the first response, the real heroes, yeah. uh, the other people who were on that bridge. It was just very fortunate that uh, the bridge had construction on it. Mm. So when the bridge collapsed, instead of cars going flying, cars kind of rode the bridge down mm-hmm. as it collapsed in the river. And so it gave people a little time to brace themselves, and it also... Uh, prevented a lot of cars from slamming into each other, yep. which that would have cost a lot more yeah. loss of life. Yeah, because, like, how, how many survivors were on the bridge part that fell? Oh, gosh, it was more than 100 survivors that yeah. were on the bridge. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it's incredible. And yeah. when you saw it, you thought, you're like, there are going to be 100 people dead. Yeah, because e- even I, like, uh, I go across that bridge a couple dozen times uh, during a week, but... I can't even imagine being one of those people who survived that or one of the first people on the scene like yourself who yeah. saw that. Yeah. Just traveling over that bridge without a little bit of trepidation. Well, and you think, you know, that night I remember distinctly driving home after being on the air until 1 or 2 in the morning and realizing how many bridges we drive under or over yeah. every day. Yeah. That, that drive home, you're sitting there like, whoa, yeah. whoa, every bridge is... There's and then, then Trump running on a campaign is like, we need a trillion dollar infrastructure plan. <laughs> so many yeah. rotten bridges across this world. It's, I mean, it's a real challenge, right? You can't just snap your fingers and replace yeah. a bridge. But we built an interstate highway system in the 50s, mm-hmm. and uh, it's time to fix it. Yeah. It's time to fix it. Nobody can agree how to pay for it, which I understand. It's a lot sexier if you're a politician to go cut a ribbon on an added lane onto a highway mm-hmm. as opposed to, like, a rebuilt bridge deck. Yeah. But uh, it needs to be done. I mean, what part of why I, uh, at the time when the bridge went down, people were saying, you know, gawkers shouldn't go down there. Mm-hmm. And I disagree. I thought every Minnesotan should go down there and see what happened to make sure that this never happens in this state again. Yeah. Uh, put pressure you know, on your legislature. You got to see it. You got to remember that. Yeah. You really do. Yeah. Um, shifting to your favorite story. I mean, you know, that's the bridge is definitely down there. But what's your favorite? Yeah, our business is yeah. so weird that yeah. people's worst moment can be our best, right? Yeah. So that and, for sure. And you get was, awards and accolades for yeah, it, and yeah. you feel it feels weird. Yeah, it's just yeah. weird. But it is a privilege when things go wrong to be able to be that mm-hmm. voice to help yeah. let people know what's going on. That's yeah. pretty cool. Uh, but favorite right, so, story. Yeah, Seventy years from now. Eight, 90 years from now, <laughs> at, at, at the DeRussia funeral eulogy, right? what's the story that they're going to have on whatever technology <laughs> we have at the wake now? Well, I think my years doing the good question segment will mm-hmm. go down as, as my, my legacy. I did that for five and a half years. Yep. Though we're approaching a length of time where I, I haven't been doing it for almost as long as I had been doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, that was such an amazing segment. I got to do so many cool things. Like, we did a story on what's on top of the IDS building. So that was one of those pinch-me moments where you're like, huh, I'm standing on top of the tallest building in Minnesota. And I'm only up here because I do this job, and they let me come up and see it. Like, that was pretty cool. Um, We did a story right after President Obama was elected on uh, whether or not the president was black. Mm. That was one of my favorite stories because we interviewed three different women who were all uh, uh, at least partially African-American. So maybe multi-ethnic, maybe uh, uh, 100% African-American. And all three of them had a different perspective on the answer, which was really cool. How many emails did you get after that segment? You know, I mean, people weren't as inflamed as they are now. Like. (laughs) The, the story really laid out how, I mean, to me, the bottom line of that, and, of course, Barack Obama has uh, a black father yeah. and a Hawaiian mother, I think, right? Yeah. Black and white. He's black and white. Mm. But the ultimate answer is if he were standing on the street hailing a cab, what would people say? They'd say, that's a black guy. Mm. Like, yep, you're black. Like, that's mostly what race is. It's... You know, you, you can't necessarily take a, a blood test or a DNA test and say, yep, this person is this. 
it's mostly a perception thing, right? It's how people are seen or how they want to be seen. It's just very interesting. It's, those kind of stories are fun, too. Uh, but I think people always wrote, you know, I, I have been really lucky to do hilarious, funny stories mm. and really, really serious stories. So who's uh, been your that's fav- a joy. Who's been your favorite interview so far? Oh, best interview. I, I wish I had an answer for that. I'm not mm. really sure. I'm not really sure. Uh, when you think of politicians, I mean, Norm Coleman and R.T. Ryback were both great interviews. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Al Franken's a harder interview. Um, but he's Stuart Smalley. He's Stuart Smalley. He's kind of loosening up yeah. lately, so he's, he's been a little more fun. Um, you know, I'll, I'll always be grateful to Governor Dayton, who is not the best soundbite in the history of the world. Mm-hmm. But when I was doing Good Question, I brought my oldest son, Seth, just to tour uh, the state capitol. And the governor's PR person knew that I was bringing Seth. So she asked the governor to call on him in a press conference. (laughs) And the press conference went on way too long. So we started to leave. So the governor actually stopped the whole press conference to come over and shake my son's hand Mm -hmm. and say hi. And I just thought, like, that was the nicest thing yeah. Uh, it was really cool. It was just a neat moment. So you get to have moments like that, which is pretty yeah. fun. Now, have you considered adding WCCO radio as your side hustle full time? <laughs> uh, you know, I was really love good to, as a fill in. Thank yeah. you. I love filling in. Yeah. It's very difficult with my schedule. Yeah. So because I'm on TV. The, the, the three to six slot right. is open. <laughs> three to six yeah. is open. But then I would be working from 3.30 in the morning till mm. 6 p.m. at night. That's pretty tough. You got to break for a nap. It's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty tough. Yeah. yeah. I could probably swing like Chad shift, like mm-hmm. the noon to three. Yeah. But three to six would be tough. Someday, like if Dave Lee ever decides he wants to retire, yeah. I would love to yeah. uh, go do his show. Oh, it's okay. I'll just have you on uh, as a guest when I'm on from three to six. There we, you're, uh, you got it. You got it. There we go. <laughs> uh, what's the uh, award accolade or even just someone saying – something nice or emailing and something nice that you're most proud of? Well, the, the award I'm most proud of was being a, being a finalist for a James Beard Award, which is... Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as the, That's pretty good. As the reporting? Is it's for it? the TV, yeah. for my Derusha Eats yeah. segments. Uh, because and, you're not a neophyte in the kitchen. Like, I've seen you can... You can uh, I can do okay. Yeah, you it can certainly was not for pans. my cooking. Yeah. It was for my uh, for best segment. And that was really... I mean, the Derusha Eats TV segment yep. is something that I've always done in my spare time. Mm-hmm. And so to get nominated, to be a finalist for that as a national award, like mm-hmm. that, that was the most amazing yep. uh, accolade for sure. So say Cooking Channel or Food Network comes knocking and is like, hey, uh, hey, right. hey, 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 man, <laughs> hey. You want to turn this into like uh, like a web series, or even promote you up to the big leagues eventually? Yeah. What would you say? I would have that conversation. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm in a in a bit of a tricky spot. Like, you look at someone like Andrew Zimmern, who's been so kind to me yeah. over the years. Andrew, when he made the jump from local TV to national cable TV, mm-hmm. you know, he he had five part time jobs, and so. It was easy to roll the dice and go try this other, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, cable food TV doesn't pay what people think it does. No, it does not. It's exposure, though. It's exposure, and then hopefully you can sell books or Mm -hmm. do speaking or do classes or whatever. When you have a regular job like I do, anchoring the news, Mm -hmm. like, that's a pretty good job. So you're like, all right, am I willing to risk that income Mm -hmm. to try something else? Makes it makes it more challenging. Uh, I mean, I don't make the big money that the yeah. anchors of the old days did, mm. but it's still not a bad living, you know. Uh, what are you looking forward to the Super Bowl coming in? Oh man, I think it's going to be great. Mm. I think it's going to be great. I I love, you know, the taste of the NFL, which is this awesome charity oh, yeah. component mm. uh, that started here in Minneapolis. Oh really? Back at the last time the Super Bowl was here 92, at the Metrodome, ninety one. Yeah. Uh, Somewhere there. Uh, so that's going to be cool to have yeah. that back where it all started. Mm. I think people are going to love the city. Uh, it will be cold. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we'll still have the skyways up so yeah. people can walk around. Uh, I, I think it's going to be great. And 
I, I hate to be like a straight up Vikings fan Bobo, but mm-hmm. you feel like at least you got a shot yep. of like how cool would it be if the Vikings uh, if the Vikings were in the Super Bowl? N- not, not like your Bears. Not like the Bears. Not, no. <laughs> although, uh, quick thoughts on Trubisky. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I can. I think I could safely uh, say that I don't have a fully formed opinion yet. Mm. Uh, but boy, they they were so happy to to swap swap out quarterbacks there in Chicago, weren't they? Yeah, it, it's almost like it's the '90s again, right? Yeah, I know. Uh, two questions, then I'll get you out of here. I know you got a hard out. Uh, what's something you collect? What's something random that people don't know about? Oh, so. Uh, what do I collect? I'm not a big collector. I have a very large, obviously, I have a very large socks collection mm. from the morning show. Our yeah. viewers seem to like my crazy socks. But uh, I'm not much of a collector. Yeah, I, have a, yeah. I have a glass art collection. I suppose mm-hmm. people don't know that. Yeah. Uh, I am a collector of glass uh, art. Do you blow your own glass? I have. Yeah. I'm not very good at it. Uh, glass blowing is so physical. Mm. What I love about art glass is that it's this beautiful combination of like brute physicality because mm-hmm. you've got fire and you've got the sand and 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 the glass and the silica and you're so you, you know you've got the big pipe, the blow mm. pipe, uh, nine hundred, two hundred, or uh, how hot is that thing? It's not 900 degrees. That's the uh, pizza oven at Punch Pizza. Oh, yeah. The, uh, the oven for glass blowing yeah. is like 2,000 degrees. Mm. But then it's this beautiful artistry, too. And you're like, wow, there's something cool about that. Uh, all right, so it's not like Sweet Home Alabama where he just puts uh, steaks out on the beach. <laughs> yeah. Not quite. You no. know exactly what I'm talking yes, about. Yes, I do. All right, last one. Um, since you're the foodie guy, uh, mm. give me – you're on death row. Okay. And they're like, all right, all right, all right, all right to Russia. We'll, we'll let you out for one day. Walk me through your final meals and your final cocktails. Oof. So uh, the truth is, like, if I had a straight-up final meal, mm. I, would probably want, I, I would probably want something super basic, not as yeah. exciting as, like, like, the lobster or the foie gras. Mm. My favorite food uh, category is pork. Yep. So I want a nice, juicy pork chop. Mm. I probably want to go to Thomas Bamer at Corner Table yep. or J.D. Fratsky who's now with uh, Red River Kitchen uh, and Bar Brigade, and have those guys, like, make me the best pork chop uh, mm. available. Uh, cocktail, it's, it's got to be a Manhattan. Like, that's mm. probably my go-to uh, favorite cocktail. Or a Negroni. Probably a Negroni, then a Manhattan. I mean, you can do it wrong. Let's go you, all you, in. Yeah. You're going to be executed. <laughs> You can go all in. But truth yeah. be told, like, if I had to pick a final meal, I'd probably want, like, a pizza and a burger. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, that's the, that's the comfort food. Yeah. That always fascinates me. You go through, like, uh, the list of death row inmates' meals, like uh, uh, bologna sandwich. Bologna uh, sandwich. Isn't that uh, interesting? On Wonder Bread. It's like. Yeah. Yeah. I, but it kind of makes sense. There's something about it, right? Yeah. It's, it's food memories. This is the thing about food. Like, so much of how we experience food has to do with. Uh, this kind of transportive quality where it takes mm. us back to a, a meal we had as a kid. Yeah. You don't want to get all, like, Oedipal on the situation mm. with uh, go all Freud on the bit. But yeah. it is, uh, it's about memory. Mm. It takes you back to a place. It is. So you can yeah. see the bologna sandwich. Oh, Jason, we, we left a bunch of topics on the table, but it's always an excuse to have guests back on for a second time. Uh, he's Jason DeRussia. Follow him on Twitter at DRussiaJ. Uh, also, same handle on Instagram and Snapchat? Same, yes. Yeah. I, I have a food, DeRussia Eats as yep. well. But, yep, DeRussia yep. J everywhere. Hit that up. WCCO Mornings. Appreciate you coming in. Thank you. Really fantastic stuff from Jason, and yeah, I, I I sort of like the quick conversations where you maybe have like four or five base topics, and then you just let it go, and then uh, it, it's a really good excuse to get people to come back for a second time. Uh, I really enjoy it, and uh, these conversations as well. Um, really appreciate the feedback. I know that you guys have been uh, well, hopefully digging into, or at least uh, saying that you have, and I, I, I just like having the cavalcade of guests in from different walks of life, and. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Oh, we got uh, Josh the Roaster, uh, uh, the coffee guy, coming in next Tuesday evening. So that show will be up next Wednesday, and that will be fun uh, as well. Have a very safe and fun and happy Memorial Day weekend. Don't be idiots out there. Have a good time. Uh, But don't, um, yeah, how about 
Oh, by the way, where do people even get fireworks on Memorial Day? That's what I want to know. Yeah, because there's always some sort of weird fireworks accident on Memorial Day. I don't know why. Uh, hit us up, Stitcher, iTunes, iHeartRadio, and check out uh, Purple for the Wind's YouTube channel. We're putting out daily-ish Vikings content. Check it out, and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, all at Andy Carlson Show. And also, ooh, here's the big key. Here's the big ask. Uh, if you enjoy the show, tell a friend, spread the word, add to the Jerome homie army. Thanks, producer Ali Sorensen, for making me not sound so stupid today, but for Jason Russia, I'm Andy Carlson saying, and young, sayonara, and bye-bye. We'll talk to you Monday. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe Monday, or maybe Tuesday. Uh, we'll see. Carlson, Minnesota's 87th best daily podcast. Download the show on iTunes. Everyone's middle name is Jerome.